First of all, uh, I would like to thank Nandeep uh, Smitha and uh, Pune Tech Community Group so for giving me this opportunity to share this knowledge on a uh, trending topic, like it's a uh, transition of on-premises SQL Server data to the fabric. So most of the organizations that plan brick and lake house. So how we will try to move on to this fabric and what are the ways or steps to follow? So I will share you in detail. So if you have any questions or else something, you can ask me at the end of it. So before moving on to the topics, right? I would just like to give a brief about myself uh, already uh, Nandim given, but I just want to add few more. I'm Rajendra. I'm a lead BA engineer at uh, Bash, uh, working with the client Microsoft as a track lead. Uh, I'm a Forex Microsoft certified trainer. Currently, I'm holding the training certificate. I'm totally 13 plus years of industry experience working with uh, different technologies in Microsoft stack itself, like uh, started with SSIS and moved onto the Power BI and currently on the Microsoft Fabric. I'm Power BI trainer and mentor and uh, community champion in the com and like uh, sharing the knowledge in the via Power BI communities where I can try to provide the solutions and the suggestions accordingly. And recently I got top business intelligence voice batch from LinkedIn and I'm one of the member uh, organizing member community in uh, Delhi Power BI group, which is well known by driven charts. So if you want to get in touch with me, so I started writing the blogs and LinkedIn, I will be active and uh, YouTube. I recently started, but it's not uh, great. And the community forums like uh, Power BI tech community, you can ask me any questions or else any subject matters related to the Microsoft Power BI or fabrics related activities. Thank you. That is about brief about myself. And coming to this topic, I will come up with some agenda. What is Microsoft Fabric? I will go with a brief about Microsoft Fabric. What are the personas that is offering? And getting started with our topic, like uh, what, how we are going to build this on-premises uh, SQL Server data to the how we are going to pull it into the lake house. So we will try to set up it, the end-to-end -end activities. And what are the needs here? First, we need to setting up the Power BI gateways and what is the gateway, we'll discuss about it. And modifying the security settings from the Power BI SQL Server and connecting to the on-premises database to the fabric, like how we are going to get connected to the warehouse from the data flows generally and so on. And if you have any questions, you can ask me or post in the chat box, I will answer accordingly. Coming to the topic, Microsoft Fabric, it's an end-to-end -end analytics platform where you can perform any kind of like from the data ingestion to like data governance related. We can inject the data and store it by using the warehouse like historical and current data. And also we can process it by inject the injected data by using the data engineering capabilities like PySpark, Scala, these kind of languages. And even if you are very good and interested in the personas like a data science, like a prediction and, and activities, we can start working on the data prediction by using data science is one of the persona, one of the tool components that has been provided by Microsoft Fabric. And real-time intelligence, which as per a recent uh, Microsoft built, it has been renamed as a real-time intelligence. Previously, we are calling it as a real-time activities too. And anyway, it is supportive product for the visualizations. We have an inbuilt uh, Power BI application, which is supporting on the visualizations to share the analysis to the customers. So if you're observing, this is a front-end architecture, which we can try to work on any kind of a stuff. So all these activities will be present in one single environment. So which has been integrated with engineering topics, integration, data warehouse, real-time intelligence, data science, and business intelligence too. Fine. How this explorer, like how, what are the types of uh, personas that is getting supported? If you're observing in the right-hand side, this is Pybrick scope, which has been included with all the personas like a semantic uh, engineering activities, Azure Synapse Analytics and Azure Synapse so data factory related, all these environments, and where we can try to build these personas with either we can try to navigate to the engineering topics with a different spark scaling mechanism or data warehouse related by using SQL performance related data science, as we just discussed, machine learning algorithms. So, most of the activities we can try to build it on this exploration of the topics by using different personas, which has been supported by your. Microsoft Fabric. So on the right hand side, if you're observing, right hand side fabric environment, pre-fabric and post-fabric. So this is a GIF actually, which I have collected from Microsoft uh, build itself. So you can observe it. 
So Azure Synapse Analytics, previously we will call it as a separate environment, which it has been integrated into the Microsoft Fabric itself. We are calling it as a Microsoft Fabric data engineering activities, data factory related, and even the data science related. All this personas has been integrated and call it as a single environment name called Microsoft Fabric environment. What are the benefits if you are trying to move on to the Microsoft Fabric? Everything on the services account. So we will try to connect under the cloud environment here. And the administration part, it is completely centralized administration where we can try to enhance the auto scale of your workspaces, data spaces, or whatever the storage area. And completely it is a low code and pro development activities we can try to perform. And as I mentioned, different variety of personas that has been inbuilt and incorporated in this Microsoft Fabric, like data engineering topics we can work on, real-time intelligence, like if you're working on the IoT devices or sensor-related data, if you're working on it, we can try to pull it and do the event scheduling and try to visualize it as the front-end part. And one security and the data governance. We can try to reuse it, maybe if the completed project and where we can try to reuse the existing data sets or Lakehouse Ex Explorer, we can try to reuse it for the next further activities too. And it is a one security feature which has been incorporated within this Microsoft Fabric. And what about the data Lakehouse, what it is and how much it is? It's a very simple activity. So instead of having the same data at the different places, it will try to restrict and maintain in a single page, single environment like retention of this information, data duplicacy will be get reduced. And the simplicity part, accessibility part, and the low cost as well, we can try to access from any kind of an environment which we can try to get it without any duplication of data. I just come up with a uh, structure. Uh, so before moving on to our main topic, how it will be get extracted from on-premises SQL database to our uh, Microsoft Fabric. So here, if you're observing on-premises, I have, I'm going to showcase on the live demo. So I will try to get connect to my SQL server, which is an on-premises. And how we are going to get connected to the Lakehouse Builder. So in Microsoft Fabric, we have a Lakehouse. How the data will be get transformed and get it stored in the Lakehouse and what type of a data transformations we can try to perform. As I mentioned, different personas it is getting supported. We can start writing the notebooks in the form of a cell, like by using the different languages like Scala, uh, Spark, lang PySpark languages. And even if you can try to do the data engine, data ingestion by using the data flow concept, we can try to do the data ingestion from the director, from on-premises SQL database to your Lakehouse as well. There are different approaches where I mean, uh, different teams are, will be get performed. So multiple approaches are there. How we are trying to bring the on-premises data into the lake house. So I'm going to showcase you one of the approach, easiest to process, and maybe you can uh, easily do that activities as well at your end. Maybe if you're planning to move onto the Microsoft Fabric. Once the data, it's get available into the lake house, it is easy to get pulled onto your Power BI, like where we can try to do the data visualizations on Power BI, I mean like a different type of analysis by using as per the customer requirement and share the data to the customers. And how the data will be get stored in Power BI? It will be get stored in the form of a direct link. So most of us will aware if you are trying to connect to the cloud environment or all premises, the data will be get stored in the form of input method or direct query method. But if you are trying to pull the data from the lake house, that will be get stored in the form of a direct lake here. And on the top of it, you can try to restrict the semantic mode, like instead of extracting multiple tables and doing the visualization, we can try to explore the connected or else required tables and do the ad hoc report building and share the analysis, I mean, quick analysis to the customers on the top of it. Like, as I mentioned, right, the SQL endpoint is, uh, I, maybe I just want to restrict a few columns, means I can write the SQL statements as well on the top. I can showcase to you practically how it is going to work on uh, SQL endpoint, how we are trying to transfer the lake house to the SQL endpoints as well. So how we are going to get started? First, if you want to get started with the lake house, we need to set up the lake house. So we have to get connected to the fabric environment. And then we have to create the lake house workspace. So we'll try to name it as a lake house there. So I will try to name it as a workspace lake house there. And then we can store the connected or else extracted information in the lake house in the form of a structure, managed tables, like it will be get 
completely structured information where it is ready to do the further analysis or else activities on the top of it. So what is a workspace? It's a basic terminology. I'll just try to explain in a few uh, words. So it's a repository where we can try to store our data sets or else a report on the top of it in the cloud-based environment. And coming to the lake house, it's a completely storing and as well as a processing for the data analysis part. It will be get occupied as a single environment and on the top of it, it's the same lake house builder. We can try to use it for different personas from the lake house if the data is available. So how we are going to get create the lake house. So I just mentioned with the snapshots here, once you can get connected to the workspace fab I just mentioned as a fabric counter so is my workspace name and we can go to the show all method and from there i can start creating the lake house i will showcase you how the practice and uh, what are the ways to get it i mean most of the functionalities on the preview feature so i will try to showcase to you how it will be work on the top of it once you can get connected to the lake house how we are going to get it extract the data so as i mentioned it's a similar process how the Power BI desktop will be showcased. In Power BI desktop, we can showcase the get data with multiple data source connections, right? Similarly, in the cloud environment, once you can create the lake house as well, we can see the similar approach, like how I'm going to extract the data from an SQL database. By using the get data option, we can try to import the required tables and then by providing the credentials. Most of the time, right? If you are working on your personal laptop or else maybe if you are using your Windows authentication, we can try to configure and we can try to get the data into the Power BI desktop application. That is a very simple process. But if you are trying to extract the data from the cloud environment, that is we have to use SQL Server authentication mechanism. So we have to use the proper username, password. And here the mandatory thing is gateway configuration is required because the data flows where it will bridge the gap between your source system to your cloud environment. So we need to enable the data management gateways here. Once the data management gateway is enabled, then we can start getting the data. I mean, as per the firewall rights and everything has been true, I mean, clear, then it is easy to see the database and their tables inside of each and every source systems. What are the things that are mandatory if you are trying to extract the data from an SQL server? So as I mentioned, highlighted here, server details is mandatory. And as I said, gateway management is mandatory here. We have to make our data gateways. Gateway management should be online. And providing the username and password details are mandatory. So we know we will connect the authentication kind with a Windows method. But basically, if you are trying to extract the data from some different so software or also some different servers, we have to make use of an authentication code with the basic and providing the user details, like a server details along with the username password. As I said, gateway configuration is a mandatory. So how we are going to enable it and make this gateway online is an I'm going to showcase you that process also. Fine. See here, this is my one of my on-premises database. I'm going to get connected. And from there, I will showcase you the thorough process how we are going to create the login user credentials. So here I'm going to showcase you the login, how we are going to get connected and provide the user details as well. While extracting the data from an on-premises source systems to the Microsoft Fabric Lake House. If you're observing first, I mean, maybe I'm going to share you the slides and all. So if you're observing here, we have to get connected to one of the, I mean, data source system, survey details. And here we have to configure the security part. So I need to get connected to an SQL authentication method. So I have enabled the SQL authentication method, providing the, I mean, like a login details, login name, and as well as the secure password. And here we have to configure three different pages. First one is a general page, if you're observing the general and server name and the user mapping. These things we have to get it configured so that without any issues or errors, we can try to easily get connected and we can input the tables from on premises source system to your cloud-based application. Let me showcase you in the practically. Please observe here. If you're observing Microsoft SQL, I have opened my SQL server. So this is my Windows authentication. It is easy for me to get extract the data from my locally Power BI desktop application, just to providing the server details and then we can import it. This is the common approach. But the similar one, how we are going to get this information, the particular table, if you are observing this 
is my source system adventure works is my database and these are the tables which has been listed from the adventure works so i want to pull it it's easy for us to extract the data by providing the server details in our power bi desktop and pull it but here the thing is i mean uh, to tricky part we have to create a proper server credentials sql server credentials it's not going to be an windows authentication currently if you're observing i get connected with a windows authentication not with an sql server authentication so we have to create a proper login credentials so let me showcase you a very simple approach see here just copying the server details it's as easy as simple so we, in the power bi desktop we can get connected and we can see the navigator and the database name and then details as well this is very simple and we can extract the table information similar way in power bi i mean instead of connecting from the power bi desktop how we are going to extract the data to the lake house let me open the web browser app.powerbi.com so license is required so if you are trying to get connected to it we need a pro license or if you want to do some trial error or else a trialing uh, how this is going to work so Microsoft is providing the trial license as well, like as up to approximately 60 days. We can make use of these all activities in the trial license also. So currently I'm using the pro account. You can see it. My license type is a premium per user with the pro account user as well. Fine. <clears throat> and this is an application with the Power BI. And if you want to navigate to the Microsoft Fabric on the left hand side, down corner, you can see the all the personas. These are all the different personas which has been listed tools. We can try to get connected and we can extract or explore. These are all the topics. Let me connect to the Microsoft Fabric. And before creating the Microsoft Fabric and Lake Host, we need to have a proper workspace. As we already discussed, workspace is a repository. So how we are going to create a workspace? Let's try to create a workspace, basic workspace. So see here, I'm in the web browser. So let me create a workspace. house i'm just giving the pune ptc lh is the name and here the license details i'm using the trial license though i'm using a premium per user apply it apply it you can configure as per the trial account means 60 days they're providing and you can see a diamond symbol which represents the fabric content so i'm trying to use and work on the fabric related activities to store my activities so how we are going to start or else create the lake house here so basically this is the front end view of the current workspace how i'm going to extract the data into the workspace so see here they are providing a new option new more just now in the slides also i showcase to you more options because i want to create a lake house now where it is so in the current workspace you can observe and here is the lake house so first let's try to create a lake house for data extraction maybe if you are trying to do some data cleansing activities and sharing the report access we can do it here itself lake house giving the name something like lake house lake house name is ptc l h e w this is the lake house explorer where within the same environment you are observing the lake house explorer with tables and files files is something like unmanaged two systems like semi-structured unstructured source system and the tables is something a managed source system like the extracted or else the connected tables are fully structured source systems will be get available in the tables part you can see it automatically whenever you created the lake house you can see in the right hand side top corner lake house currently it is a lake house along with the maybe if you want to write the statements restrict instead of my many columns i want to restrict with some columns i want to do perform some sql statements also we can perform it here once you can just try to convert to the sql analytics endpoint you can write the statements too but our main criteria I want to get connected to the on-premises source system to the cloud environment. How? How we are going to pull this? So I'm using the new data flow gen to select it. Click on this.
I want to get extract the data here from the data flow gen 2 from importing SQL. So here import from SQL server. Basically, this process, right? We have to provide the server details. And as I mentioned, gateway is mandatory. Gateway should be available online. And user credentials, authentication method I'm going with basic only. It's not have any Windows authentication. Basic. And we have to provide the username password. So how we are going to pull it? So first of all, we have to turn on our gateway connection. Make the gateway should be online, up and running. So for this, we are going to use on-premises data management gateway, not our personal gateways. Let me open it. As of now, it is offline. Let me turn it on uh, real quick. So once it's turned on our gateway, I have already created a gateway name called MS Live Fabric and it is online and up and ready. So how we are going to on the same activity in the Power BI services level. Let me showcase you the process as well. So here we have to provide these details like a server details and everything. Before that, let me turn on the gateway in the Power BI services also. So here in the settings part, select the settings part. You can see something like a manage connections on the gateway. Turn it on, select it. Let me close it one second. If you're observing, I just enabled my gateway and it is not any, I mean, it is still not offline. I just want to make it as an online. Check the status with an online. You can see the gateway connection MS Live Fabric is online now. So once it is turned on, now we'll just try go back to our source system. Let's try to connect it. You can see automatically the gateway should be pop up in those credentials. So you have observed the connection details, right? You can see the gateway should be enabled now. See here. So we have to get it configured and make this gateway is an enabled. So before that, we have to provide the server and login details. So how we are going to get it created this username and password. Basically, I have to get connected to the basic version authentication method with the username password, how it is going to turn out. So assume that we don't have the authentication method. Let me create it a very quick authentication mechanism also. So see here, my database part. And security is, I'm just trying to make it as a SQL server and Windows authentication is enabled. And here, security level, login, new login. I'm creating a new login. So I just have to provide username and password, right? So it's not going to be a Windows authentication. I just have to get connected to the SQL Server authentication mode. I'm giving some name like ADLS PTC. So these steps are very important if you are trying to configure. I'm using only this policy. And I'm going to use the database adventure works, which I have to get connected to the Power BI services level in my lake house. So master, I'm trying to configure the English language here. English. So this is the first one, general. Let's try to configure the server roles and details too. So public and system administration roles. So these roles will be get changed as per the connections, as per the user dependency. And here, I want to get connected to the agent for sample database, not uh, and provide the default schema with the DBO schema. And here also, we have to turn on this DB ownership as well as the public. So these three configurations, once you turn on, just try to select 
okay try to cross verify so the user details has been get created now you want to get connected with the same username by using a sql server authentication mechanism so let me showcase you we will test it and before testing let me restart my application as well we have to restart Let me try with this. Yes, pair. This is the old one. See. So you can see here, I have tested, I'm able to connect with my current SQL Server credentials too. The same username password we will try to incorporate in the Azure environment as well. So because it is not supporting Windows, we'll try to get connect with the authentication code with the basic by providing the username password details. Let's try to provide the server name. Server details. Whenever you have passed the server details automatically, as I said, the gateway configuration is available, live configuration. So authentication code is basic and here you have to provide the username and password details. So let's try to provide same details like which I have created just now, ADLS PTC. Privacy settings as per the organizational or also private configurations we can do. So I'm using because it's a general uh, global available data set. I'm using the privacy settings. So whenever if you are trying to connect from on premises source system to the cloud, you can see a prompts here. We will see the multiple prompts. Because it's a cloud based as per the network speed and uh, bandwidth, it will take some time as well. That one also we have to keep in mind. And the database name is optional because maybe if you have multiple databases, we can try to pass the database name also. Because, and here in my backend SQL Server, I have only one database, uh, AdventureWorks Data Warehouse. You can see the tables too. So here we are trying to load on premises so system stable to the cloud environment, how it will be get stored. So I'm trying to load some of the tables. You can see the list of tables on this AdventureWorks database, like example. Simple tables have been loaded because, as I said, uh, it will take some time as is a cloud based environment. Uh, one fact table loaded. I'm selecting four tables employee related, geography, location related, product, and maybe I'll try to choose the product category and product subcategory, hierarchical uh, kind of uh, data sets I'm trying to incorporate. So, see here, you can see the data as a preview. It's just like how we will try to extract the data from Power BI Desktop. The similar kind of view we can try to observe whenever if you are trying to import the data from on-premises source system to the cloud-based environment. So it's a preview. So let's try to create it. So as I said, we have multiple steps to get load these tables into the lake house environment. So this is just like a view where we can try to view it in the Power Query Editor in our Power BI Desktop too. So similar view. This is just like a Power Query Editor, online Power Query Editor. So by using a data flows, we have created a saved, auto save. And you can see the formula bar. So it's a where, how we connected this table and yield all information, similar view. So these are all the tables which has been listed. These tables has been get loaded and stored on your lake house builder. So these are the six tables which will be get available in our lake house so let me showcase very quick here the lake house to one second okay let me load it give me the name as this So as I said, there are similar activities we can try to do it. I mean, just like a power query editor, like a removing the columns or else maybe if you are trying to restrict the number of tables or else the fields, we can try to restrict in this online power query editor, which we are calling it as a data flow. So the transformations will be get recorded here, which you are observing the query settings for data transformations, whatever. Maybe if you are trying to 
uh, remove some columns like hiring date example. These transformations will be get recorded as is like Power BI desktop level. The transformation data transformations will be get stored here. Fine. This is very important where the data will be get stored. If you're observing when I'm trying to on hover on the top of the lake house, you can see your workspace name workspace is PTC LH lake house. I named it as a PTC LH EW and here I want to store into the lake house PTC LH EW that is the lake house name. So we have to get it configure this part. So how? Just try to select the gear icon here, data destination, where you want to store your extracted tables from your on premise association with the cloud. Try to select it, gear icon. No need to configure anything. If you don't have any lake house, you can try to create it from here to lake house creation. But as of now, I have created one lake house. I'm using the lake house with a none option. Select none. Next. And you can see list of lake houses as, a, as well as the workspaces that are available in my workspaces backend. So you can see different types of workspaces that are available. So this is my workspace which I have created PTCLH. Try to select it. Select it. So currently by default it will be get showcased to you first table dimension employee. So once you can try to configure your lake house all the tables all six tables will be get stored in the form of a table so explorer part i have showcased you tables and files all these tables which has been structured fully structured these tables will be get available on your tables part in your the lake house explorer try to select your lake house lake house lake house next you can see the types of methodology like data types maybe if you want to change the data types or number of columns if you want to get deleted you can all configure here column mapping is there maybe if you want to change the source type like uh, data types here we can try to change it we can configure it and maybe if you want to delete the number of columns which are available in each and every table we can do the activities also and use automatic approach. So this is the automatic approach. If you can try to turn on this approach, you can see, as I said, right, maybe if you want to get it appended with another table or maybe if you want to replace any of the columns with another data set or else a schema, we can try to perform these activities by turning off this automatic setting. So as of now, I'm going with the normal uh, by default approach that is an automatic settings. Save the changes. As I said, it will get some time to get it stored and uh, make it available the data sets in your lake house. You can see here the data process will be back and will be get flowed. And let me open your one second before that. And few more uh, approaches I'll just try to showcase to you before publishing these all data sets into the lake house. Just now we have configured employee table to store that information into the lake house remaining tables will be automatically processed whenever you can try to publish it into the lake house so before publishing some more important activities i just want to showcase to you in the data flow here data flow concept so if you're observing downside one of the few few important concepts show data view so currently i'm observing the data view only I just want to see the schemas also so we can try to configure and as I said right number of columns if you want to get it delete or select okay and select, I mean uh, number of columns changing the number of columns or else uh, using the removal approach we can perform it from here is for the schema just like as I mentioned export this particular template in the form of a PQT format we can do this format also maybe we can try to reuse in another schemas or else another design we can try to use these particular data sets and information to the next uh, lake house builder also by using this export template so let me try to publish all these tables into the lake house now so here we have two options publish right away publish later so I'll just try to publish it right away to the lake house which i have selected uh, ptc lvw so now we are back into the workspace you can see the changes here it is getting loaded the from the data flow the data sets will be get loaded onto the lake house so by default you can see here this is our lake house your semantic model data sets also will be get stored anywhere lake house itself let me open it 
let me open it currently no table information no table information because we haven't extracted any files i'll just try to showcase to you in the files part it's getting loaded you can see the notifications will be get created here notifications every notifications whatever the activities you are trying to perform it will be get showcased maybe if there is any failure or else maybe if there is any alert like successfully created the tables those information will be get stored in the form of a notification and few, some more important things as because it will take some time to get load all six tables all six tables will be get visible to you here how my data if i'm going to extract some external sources like azure uh, amazon web services like s3 buckets how we are going to extract these source systems it's very simple we have a shortcut option here instead of if you are observing the get data from here also from this new shortcut you can see a prompt so from here we can try to configure s3 bucket level by providing those server details and everything we can try to get it extract the data from amazon web services i mean s3 buckets or else we can try to configure even the direct lake house also from here one lake also and if you are working on the dynamics 365 like a data was related we can try to get it extracted by providing those configuration server configurations from this data was configurations too so it's a kind of a quick or else a shortcut notification where we can try to store external source systems into your lake house builder So the all six tables will be get visible for us. You can see here. These are the six tables which I have loaded. So as I said, it will take some time uh, as per the network speed. One minute. The same tables, right? We can try to reuse it for another. The same tables instead of making it as a duplicate, we will reuse the lake house the current lake host data extraction to the some new projects to instead of data duplication that is the main advantage of using lake house okay you can see the data here all the tables so how this data will be get stored this is very very important if you're observing the data will be get stored in the form of a parquet file so here i will try to use the view files you can see the data will be get stored in the form of parquet file where the data will be get stored in the columnar storage format so which is compressed storage space and also very quick to get it access and try to make use of for different activities too and these are the catcher files it will be get available in the form of delta log file so all this how these files in the form of a json it will be get stored on each and every table for each and every table we can see those parquet file creation so from by using this view files you can see the parquet files so for speeding up and as well as the query execution part it will be get stored in the form of a parquet file and we can use it fine as i said i want to write the statements how we are going to do that activity from this lake house this is very important so currently my tables are available here i just want to get make use of sql statements also i want to write the statements on the top of it as of now the tables are ready and it is stored in the lake house i want to write the statements on the top of it so currently as i said in the top right top corner the data is lake house so I'll just try to change it to the sql data endpoints to try to configure it this is similar view which we can try to observe in our sql server or oracle databases so you can see the similar kind of a way like a dbo schemas and all the table information even we can try to create the views on the top of it views folder also available here so as i said how we are going to write the statements so just try to select the new sql statement statement you can try to write whatever so there is an intelligence we can try to see the other notifications will be pop up so you can try to write it here okay and you can try to do the grouping or else customized statements and we can get it stored that information the sql statements here too we'll just try to renaming these statements will be queried and we can reuse as well okay my query the shared queries or else maybe if you want to share it with our team members we can share these queries also from here just write a simple execution okay similarly
fine you have just executed how can we showcase the insights from here itself so this is very important if you are observing you explore this data in the form of a preview that is nothing but we can start preparing the ad hoc analysis to like a probably a view it will try to reflect so see here explore this data in the form I mean this is a preview feature we have to select the statement so from here from this particular data set we can see the similar prompt as like a power bi so where we can see on the right hand side the data visualizations on the data sets which you are observing here so if you can see the similar prompt so maybe i'll just try to explore based on the gender like count select it and also we can try to choose the charts different type of a charts it is get visible for us so process mechanism is as simple as easy just like if you are already aware on the power bi desktop application similar way we can try to project it the analysis too so let me showcase another category email address maybe we'll just try to change it so some other different charts as well and on the top of it so previously we will i mean in power bi desktop application we can see all the filter pane on the left hand right hand side but here if you are trying to prepare the ad hoc analysis the top corner so because it's as i said right preview feature maybe in future it will be get incorporated on your application power bi services fabric environment so here we can try to enable this filter data filtration part as so and from here itself we can save this report and we can start sharing these analysis to the customers too okay it's a ad hoc analysis and even we can try to export this data in the form of an excel file currently it is supporting currently it is supporting an excel file format we can export and we can try to validate the data part and all we can do it here and currently if you are observing these are the six tables so i would just want to see the model how it looks like so in the similar way you can see the down corner data currently query view so we just extracted and loaded in the query view we started writing the queries too and last view we are calling it as a model view down corner if you are observing down bottom completely bottom left hand side corner okay model so we can see all the tables along with some log files too so you have extracted few tables only right five or six six tables you have extracted why these many tables are getting visible for us those remaining tables those are all like a log files log tables it will be get stored maybe if you don't want to observe these log tables so log tables in the sense so previously you have worked with some different project those data sets will be get stored in the form of history or requested file analysis in the form of a logs so these tables if you don't want to use it or maybe if you don't want to uh, make it available in the modeling part we can try to configure here we have a functional name called manage default power bi semantic model with the, all the six tables only so which we have connected select it you can try to configure here tables confirm only the required tables will be get visible for us you can see here six tables no other log files or else some other like uh, scatter files will be not scatter tables will not get visible for us whenever you are trying to configure on the semantic model so from here we can write or build the connectivities from one table to the another table similar like a drag and drop mechanism we can try to do that and still if you want to prepare a new report we can try to do the new report preparation by using this just selecting the new report it will be prompt like a power bi application i mean in the services level we can start writing also let me give it so how this data will be get stored as i said in our architecture the data will be get stored in the form of a direct lake it is not like import method it is not a direct query method the data will be get stored from a direct lake direct lake from the lake house so from here you can give the connectivities as i mentioned let me give it one quick uh, connection between these two simple drag and drop approach only so you can see the similar way 
even though we don't have a manage relationship option or else something you can see whenever you are trying to drag and drop the similar approach like a new relationship if you are trying to build dimension product category to the product category and it is many to one relation and configure as a single part same connectivity has been built so just one uh, two tables i just want to showcase as with the time limit so here we cannot create any new columns calculated column or the dax functionality but we can start creating the new measure functionality too. you can see it in the top corner top at the header level new measures maybe if you are trying to use a dax related functionality we can try to select it those functionalities automatically visible to you on your table level whenever you are to start preparing the visualization so i'm not creating any measures dax measures i'll just try to directly navigate to the new report building so just try to select the new report we have the functionality that's why I just want to trick is how we are going to create the new dax related business requirements or as a business logics by using this approach we can get it created suppose if you want to write any new column or else a column creation we can do it in the back end part or else in the data level we can start like as a showcase to you right data flow level we can start creating the new columns to adding the columns select the new report so this complete information it will be get stored in the you can see in the top part ptc lh lake house itself you can see it here you can see it whatever activities you are trying to perform it will be get created and stored anywhere workspace inside the lake house so i'm just navigating back again so similar view how we will try to observe in the power bit desktop similar view and functionalities we can try to observe visualization pane and this is the data pane where we can start building some quick analysis just to provide the relationship with two things oh, how we are going to navigate it back to the lake house or else how we can try to navigate it back so see here left hand side so currently i'm starting creating the report but i just want to cross verify the lake house again so we don't have any option to navigate it back other than this left hand side these tabs just try to select it if you want to navigate it back and try to observe the tables or else maybe if you want still want to write the tuning or like uh, aggregating the data with these statements we can go to the queries or else model as well okay just try to showcase to you report let me create it very quick i'll just try to count it aggregations we can do it from here or we can have a me mechanism as a showcase to you measures we can try to create it we can do that activity too So I have provided the relationship with this product category and product subcategory. Let me quickly visualize it. Uh, product keys count. Just one second. <laughs> like this i just added a product line as well as a standard cost amount so in this way we can try to prepare the visualization and we know we can save this report and we can start wherever like as i said right here i have given the workspace name so here we can try to save your report and we can share the report analysis from here as well it's not like we have to go back to the workspace and try to share it we can just try to showcase very quick test report save it and we have a functionality whenever we are trying to save the report you can see the folder also we can get it created and then we can save the report as well so from here you can start sharing this report analysis to the user and then they can try to get it access and try to take the business relations accordingly so the main I mean criteria that we have to remember how we are going to pull that information from on premises source systems to this cloud based environment
the process is very simple i mean if you are trying to summarize so if you have the proper server details and the configurations login user details we can easily get connected to it and here the important thing that we require is the gateway should be turned on because the data flow should be get happened by using this gateway only it should be on and then we can try to configure with the basic mechanism authentication code with providing the username and password fine and i'm ready to take the questions if you have any questions please post in the chat box or else you can unmute it